good evening all welcome to this uh, new session uh, we will try to see three top three differential diagnosis where we will try to see uh, cases with similar imaging appearances but different pathologies so this is set 2 already we have discussed some cases in the set 1 so this was a first case where there will be three different cases of sacroiliitis but the pathologies will be different here you can see this is bilateral symmetrical sacroiliitis with edema and irregular of articular margins involving bilateral SI joints and also there will be uh, widening of the SI joints initially followed by narrowing in the latter stages. So whenever you see symmetrical bilateral sacroiliitis definitely suspect ankylosing spondylitis. Uh, initially there will be widening of joint space, later there will be narrowing and predominantly there will be bony erosions, irregularity and articular irregularity of articular margins predominantly involving the iliac aspect. Late stage there will be narrowing with ankylosis. This is the second case where you can see this is also image picture mimicking sacroiliitis but there is predominantly sclerosis involving the iliac aspect. Here you can see there is predominantly sclerosis involving the iliac aspect. On CT you can see there is sclerosis predominantly involving the iliac aspect but there is no typical erosions or destruction of the joint space. So this was a case of osteitis condensans ilii which also mimics sacroiliitis and even enclosing spondylitis. So this is the third case where you can see there is a even uh, a left SI joint is involved that is unilateral involvement. There is collection within the SI joint space and even extreme to the soft tissues. So this was a case of uh, tubercular arthritis involving left hip joint, left SI joint. So these are the three different sacroiliitis with different pathologies but with similar imaging appearance. So next uh, there is a beautiful mnemonic framed by Sandeep Awal sir uh, from the radiology vibes that is PAIR. So psoriatic arthritis, arthritis and reactive arthritis are asymmetrical involvement whereas ankylosing spondylitis and IBD related arthritis are symmetrical involvement. And sometimes other causes of sacroiliitis which you can remember are psoriatic arthropathy, Vesage disease, hyperparathyroidism, pyogenic sorcerer septic arthritis, Ritter syndrome arthritis, enteropathic arthritis, rheumatic causes, sometimes oncology and even drug induced. This is very rare uh, that is isotretinoin which is nothing but synth synthetic vitamin A derivative used to treat acne which can also cause sacroiliitis. So this is also other picture where you can see similar picture involving the um, proximal femur especially the shaft of proximal femur. Here you can see there is a well defined radiolucent uh, expansal lesion with no significant sclerotic rim. This was a simple bone cyst which was depicted on hypointense on T1, hyperintense on T2. This is a simple bone cyst. Sometimes there is a lytic lesion with ground glass opacity associated with thick sclerotic rim. This picture is classically seen in proximal fever. This is classically called as rend sign and classically seen in fibrous dysplasia. And other similar imaging appearance will be LS MFT that is liposclerosis mixofibrous tumors which typically involves the intertrochantic region where there will be lytic lesion with lucent areas and even some calcified component and associated with sclerosis. So this is typically involves the intertrochantric region of proximal femur. So this is liposclerosis mixofibrous tumors but now this uh, word entity is removed in fifth edition of WHO tumors and it is nothing but called as fibrous dysplasia. So remember simple bone cyst, rind sign in fibrous dysplasia, LSFMFT as differential diagnosis for lesions in the proximal one of the femur. Next here this is abdominal wall defects, three different abdominal wall defects but has similar imaging appearance. So this is physiological herniation of the bowel. You can see this is the physiological herniation of the bowel which is normal uh, which starts up to 18 to 12 weeks and even uh, by 12 to 13 weeks it completely the bowel will return into the abdominal cavity. So if there is herniation of the bowel beyond 13 weeks definitely suspect uh, pathology. So this is physiological herniation of the bowel and here you can see there is herniation of the bowel loops into the abdominal cavity uh, from the abdominal cavity into the through the defect. There is a membrane surrounding it and even umbilical cord is inserted into it. So this is classically omphalocele and here this is other case where you can see this is also mimics the omphalocele and physiological herniation of bowel but there is no membrane and there is no umbilical cord insertion typically invariably on the right side. So this was a case of gastrocesis. So remember physiological herniation of the bowel, omphalocele and gastrocesis for abdominal wall defects. And other differential will be prune belly syndrome. So remember these abdominal wall defects. So maternal serum alpha phytoprotein may be elevated. The extent of AFP rise is often greater for gastrocesis than for omphalocele, which is also one of the other differentiating point. Next, uh, these are three different cases presenting with cysts in lung. Here you can see there are cysts of varying sizes with thin walled scattered in bilateral lung fields. Here also you can see cysts of varying sizes scattered in bilateral lung fields with pneumothorax. So this was a case of lymphangiomatosis, which is common in females and these are nothing but benign metastatizing picomatous tumors and common association with tuberous sclerosis. 
this is other case where you can see multiple cysts of varying sizes interspersed with areas of ggos so here in lamb the intervening lung parenchyma will be normal but if there are multiple cysts with intervening lung parenchyma shows as ggos or ground glass opacities especially in a female suspect lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia so cysts with ggos suspect lip so which is common in females and even autoimmune that is jogren syndrome and in aids and this is also similar other picture where you can see multiple cysts of varying sizes which are bizarre shaped predominantly in the upper lobes in a child or young adult in smoker so this whenever you see bizarre cyst with intervening nodules here you can see there are multiple nodules which are intervening in it so and sometimes these nodules uh, uh, cavitate uh, for forming cysts and also honeycombing appearance can be seen this is langerhans cell histiocytosis so remember cysts if there are simple multiple cysts with pneumothorax in a female lymphangiomatosis if there are multiple cysts with intervening ggos in female suspect lip if there are multiple cysts intervening with lung with shows nodules which may show cavitating nodules in a young smoker or child suspect lch so this is other picture where uh, you can pause the slide and see the differences other difference will be breed hog dupe syndrome where there you can see multiple paramediastinal cysts you can pause the slide and see varying other causes of uh, rare cystic lung disease and even ultra rare cystic lung disease so this is other case where you can see typical there will be all the three images will show synovial proliferation with uh, blooming on gre here you can see there is a thick irregular nodular synovial proliferation with showing blooming on gre you can see dense thick irregular uh, pro synovial proliferation showing significant blooming on gre so we, this is nothing but pigmo, pigmented villa nodular synovitis where you can see nodular uh, synovial proliferation and also villa synovial proliferation with blooming due to hemosiderin deposition here also you can see there is a collection noted within the joint space and at center the knee joint which are showing multiple round to well well defined intraarticular loose bodies so this was this is nothing but synovial osteochondromatosis which can be primary or secondary in primary there will be loose bodies are very small and uniform whereas in secondary there are very large Uh, and uh, commonly can be seen in trauma osteoporosis and even neuropathic joints this is other case where you can see the thick synovial proliferation with blooming on gre due to hemosiderin deposition and even there is osteoarthritic changes with bony erosions and the typically you have to take the radiograph where you can see uh, osteoarthritic changes broadening of the femoral condyles flattening and even deep intercondylar notch so this is a classical case of cirrhotic synovitis in hemophilic arthropathies next this is other case uh, these are pathologies we make uh, uh, involving the metatarsal and metacarpals you can see fusiform enlargement of the meta metatarsal with adjacent soft tissue swelling this was a case of spina ventusa or tb here you can see the short tubular bones of hands are enlarged thin cortex with remodeling and showing multiple trabeculations this is a case of hemolytic anemia here you can see there are multiple enchondromas multiple enchondromas you can see multiple enchondromas with even some area showing bony remodeling this was a case of enchondroma so enchondromas can mimic spina ventusa hemolytic anemia and leukemias thank you all